has a stall again. Look at that, Larry. That's a blast from the past. Isn't what it? is that? Choose of everything. Uh, oh, absolutely. I think this might fit somewhere here. Yeah, I don't know where. We'll stick that anywhere you like. Oh! I'll ride shotgun with you here, huh? There you go. So, how long did it actually take for you to get to this point? Well, that was at the Auto Sports Show in 2016 as a caged chassis, rolling chassis, um, with a different graphic job in it. But it, the panels were there, the shell was there, no drivetrain or anything. So, it's a long time ago. What did this start life as? Like the idea? Did you always want to build an Audi drift car? Uh, well, I always wanted an Audi S1. Like, it's my favorite car of all time. Group B, just the coolest thing that there ever was. So I always wanted an S1. And then I got to a point at home in the workshop and I was like, are we going to build an amazing Sylvia and do European competition? Or are we going to build something different, you know? I think a lot of people maybe reached that. Uh, and then when you build something different, you're sorry you didn't build a competitive Sylvia, and when you build a competitive Sylvia, you're bored and you want to build something different. So we just started into it, started collecting panels and finding stuff. It's really difficult to find the bits and pieces, but it took a lot longer. There was a lot of hiccups, especially the engine was a big problem and, and things like that. But So the last time I was here in Ireland, I actually came here 11 years ago. I stayed at your place, had a chance to check out your operation, your shop. Yeah. And I clearly remember you telling me that you had an idea to build something like this. Right. But, you know, since then, it's actually come to fruition and it's sitting in front of us. What did the original chassis start as? Was so, it like a bare shell? Or? It, it was an Audi coupe, so it would have been the, the poverty spec quattro at the time. So you could buy the narrow body front wheel drive coupe, like a two liter five cylinder, even they came with a carburetor, they were that old. Um, because if you were to get an S1, it oh, would be God so sake. expensive. Yeah, and you couldn't modify to the level I've modified, it would be a shame, you'd devalue it. Uh, you couldn't even do it to a UR Quattro unless you found a rusty shell somewhere, and even at that, it would be huge money. No, I guess six, seven years ago, it wasn't that bad. No, it's beyond obtainable. They're just, price have gone so high. So even the coupes are rare now to find a front wheel drive, you know, one that you could use. A, a, a good one, good coupe could be 10,000 euro now, you know, when they were, I think I bought that for 750 euro or something. 750, yeah. so was it a running driving car? No, it was kind of abandoned in an industrial state, a black car. Uh, I remember like the tail lights were broken and the tail lights are really hard to find and expensive, and, but it was just kind of abandoned. I bought two, I bought one in Dublin then as a parts car that was quite rusty. And uh, the one I bought in Dublin actually was a um, very early one and they came with the four square lights and then I needed two square lights for the S1 front because they used, they used the old small lamp. So that's genuine lamp. But the thing that blows me away is it's just all custom panels. How much of it is actually left? How much of Audi is actually left? Uh, just like this yeah. part? Roof, floor pan. Um, these panels are actually direct copy of the rally car, like. So they came from Bulgaria, from um, a company called Pro Speed. You know that guy? He has a hill climb one. It's quite famous on on YouTube. It's a kind of a little bit of a modern interpretation replica. Really cool car. So I got a spin in his car in Switzerland, oh. and from then I was like, so this is the rally car front, which is totally as the Group B car was. That's the Group B car side scot. But things get different here because we didn't shorten the car, so the Group B car should be 11 inches shorter here. But we left the long wheelbase. We wanted a more of a GT car look, and obviously the wheelbase for drifting, the, the short car is horrible, too short. So this is actually exactly the same as a Sylvia wheelbase, like 99. Got it. So then this is all custom. This is custom. So this was a replica of the rally car, but it finished here, and we got it cut, extended, and shaped that was done in Germany and the back of the car came from Germany and tell you what like there's some difference in labor cost between Bulgaria and Germany the back was crazy money and the front was actually okay it wouldn't mind hitting the front and getting some panels it's actually not too bad Prospeed do them quite good 
And then we made this out of three Group B rally car wings, because this is the Pikes Peak wing. And this is incredibly hard to find, and there was a company in Germany doing it, and they wanted checkbook figures. So we bought three Group B wings, and we chopped it all up, and I bought an in-plate, a genuine in-plate, a genuine replica, so I, I had the right shape, which is very important to me, and then we just copied it in aluminium, and then we made everything work. So this is like a hybrid of Group B and Pikes Peak, because it has the Group B air divider for the radiator here, which comes off with the trunk, but the Pikes Peak car took the air in the roof. I know too much about this car. But you know what blows me away is you had to go through such great lengths to keep the look with yeah. the wing. You couldn't have just like custom made something that looks similar. No, I mean the, the Group B one has the perfect shape and the little dimple, so it had to be right. So we had to get more of them. A second one then to chop for the sides and get the, the side right. And then we had these, but we had to get like three or four more to make up the double, triple wing. So it had to look right these are the group b uprights then they had to be right as well so it, i've seen a lot of replicas and you can tell from a mile off that they're a replica it's just not right so it's the pikes peak rear group b front because the pikes peak front has that big aluminium aerofile on it which is i mean i love 80s but that's too 80s like it's horrible like, <laughs> it's horrible they just stuck it on there it was the one walter rawl drove the okay. white one michelle drove the yellow and white uh, rally car a year oh, before, God. which was a well, a, it was a slightly narrow body. It wasn't the the big God evolution it. two. That was an evolution one. Ah, uh, so then this actually it actually takes in air. Yep, for the rear from radio. here and from here. Yep. And then what is this opening for? So you have the air divider here that sends half the air up to the underneath the spoiler and half down to the radiator. So that's how the Group B rally car was cooled only. But the Group E rally car had the radiator against the rear of the trunk, which we thought was a little bit vulnerable in a drift car. So we put it at an angle inside and then we fed it with air to stop a low pressure Got area in front of it. it. So, Can we take a look at the engine bay? Of course. And I'm assuming that nobody else has done anything like this and there's not any other really famous Audi drift cars because this is just so difficult. <laughs> yeah, um, I think there's one in Hungary or something, but it's just, it, it looks like a UR Quattro or whatever. Um, I don't know what engine is in it or anything. It is a drift car, but it's rear wheel drive. We moved the engine back because originally they're out here. Yeah, it's yeah. like in the front bumper almost. Yeah, those I think things. they're 63% they're nose weight, which is, yeah, that's not gonna fly. So we moved it back like 18 inches, I think, which we can, because we've no front drive shafts. Uh, you know, just a, a regular rear wheel drive sequential gearbox then, and uh, it actually has a Sylvia rear subframe in it then. So, which might be, you know, cheating a little bit. The, the thing for us is, we've gone to great lengths, like the Need for Speed Corolla, and we've gone bespoke, and it's more of a pain than anything, because you have to have bespoke spares, and you run two cars, then you carry twice the spares, whereas we run this car and that car, and all the suspension components are very similar, you know? So like, you know, we can replace an upright from one car to the other. So we, we tr actually try now to keep them the same. This is the primary vehicle. And then we try to keep like the secondary vehicle. So we've only one spares package. Oh wait, so then this is your S13. Yeah. So this actually has a S13 rear end? Yeah, S14 rear end. Oh, yeah. S14 rear end. Yeah, that is an S14 rear end as well, same thing, ah, pretty much. Ah, okay. And so then what transmission is it? It's got a sane six speed sequential at the moment. So it's, uh, it's an, made in Argentina, actually. Interesting. So, and the, the engine is, uh, it's actually a diesel block, so 2.5 TDI block. So it's a tall deck with a stroker kit in it. So it's like 2650 cc. It's got the Group B rally car, 20 valve head. And after that, everything else is custom. So it's sitting at 635 horsepower at the moment. It's got to sound so insane. I can't oh, wait to hear this sounds thing. sounds so oh. good. The anti I can't wait to hear this thing. Uh, you're actually going to take it out onto on track. I plan to, yeah. yeah. So it's nowhere near ready, you know, calling it a drift car. Yeah, it's rear wheel drive and we go sideways in it. I want to do sprints in it and hill climbs in it and everything eventually, but I've driven it three to four times. So we've done a couple of changes for this weekend. We're in the development process, you know. It's not doing a couple of things how we want. It's very difficult to sit out of the 240SX into this and go, Oh, this looks so lovely, but this thing...
it's all over it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this thing is amazing, so. I mean, and also, because this is a personal project, it's probably hard for you to find time to work on this because you have so many customer cars now yeah. that you're building for all, all people all over the world, I'm assuming. Yeah. That was, look, that could have been 50% of the delay in the project, you know? It was never a priority. It was never to do a championship. It was, it was a dream that a lot of people have and it's very difficult to, to complete one of these cars, you know? This is just so cool. I just see where you guys cut, um, all the front is tubed, mm -hmm. but I love the way that the intercooler is angled this way because of yeah. this turbo setup. It's mm -hmm. so cool. Did you guys make all of this stuff? In well, house? I actually bought the makings of an engine from Norway out of a, a guy from Gatville, which you know well, and this came with it out of his tube frame S1. You know the, the KRB one or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bought a lot of stuff off of him and this came with it and I wasn't planning to use it. The original plan was for this channel that's cut out here, the exhaust was to go down there and down and down the passenger side. But we ended up going so far back with the engine and stuff, we had to come up with something else. So we recycled it. It's not amazingly pretty in some places, but we recycled it and we put the Garrett reverse rotation turbo straight outside. And this is so cool yeah. that it yeah. <laughs> feeds off one exit, but it's cut out and put together. Like Yeah, the, the screamer is teardropped into the- That is so exhaust, yeah. cool. I've never seen that before. I've seen, it's quite popular in like uh, drag Hondas and stuff, Do you know, where they just exit through the hood. Yeah. And then if you're trying to be sexy about it, you merge the screamer in and it's this different. Like you can see, we just do things to be different. I mean, this is probably too much volume in here. It's probably suboptimal if you want to get gay about it, but like, it is cool. It's everything is a talking point. Every inch of it, people are, you know, it's something different. It's impressive. It sounds amazing. It's about trying new things and being unique. Drifting a five-cylinder. I know. Just so cool. Yeah, yeah. The noise it makes is just so beautiful. Oh. It's so beautiful. Oh my goodness! It's all business in here. Yeah. You even have a passenger seat. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is a show piece, you know? So we want to take people for passenger rides and it's not a full on competition car. The, the comp car has no passenger seat, no restriction to what we can do with that. But this is, you know, it has to be, take. it's a fun car for other people to enjoy also. A lot of people haven't seen one of these, you know? So we want to bring people for passenger rides and leave them experience a noise that from the eighties that they might never have heard before. You know, you got to go to Goodwood or something to listen to something like this, you know? So uh, and you, I could see you had to bring the this uh, the tunnel yeah. back so much because the engine is so far back. Huh? Yeah, and we actually the, we adapted the gearbox to the engine, and we put as big of an adapter plate we could make with the longest input shaft to move the weight further back as well. So it is quite back, and the the, the gearbox is a weird shape. So the tunnel is a weird shape. Um, the gearbox is is a strange design. So yeah, it's a little bit. It's intrusive here a little bit, but it fits me fine. Um, dry sump, obviously, there's your oil tank. Yeah. Not covered, but hey, we die like real men. I don't care, you know, we, we, we don't have any leaks. Yeah. Haltech. Haltech, Elite yeah. 2500. All Elite 2500, all yeah. Haltech, Loom and everything, all Tomer coupled probes, can everything. So yeah. all Haltech, we use Haltech on everything. We have zero issues with it ever. Yeah. We do, do it once and it's done. So really yeah. happy KW with KW suspension. Yeah, KW yeah. is all around. And how far back is this compared to stock? You're sitting way further back. My ass now. is in the exact same place from the center of the front wheel as it is in that car. Really? So my pivot point should be natural. Got it. So that way you can kind of um, feel, have the same feeling yeah. in terms of how much angle you yeah. have. You remember something like the Saturn Sky, you know? Yeah, and with the cheese heads. Yeah, and you yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're sitting on the back wheel and your your pivot over the front, you feel like you're on huge angle when you first drive it, but you're not because you're just swinging so far and your pendulum, you know? So when we had a clean sheet to start with, we just made it natural as we could with the Sylvia subframe, Sylvia front KWs, and you know, the, the, the seating position, we kept it in the same place between the wheelbase, silly things like that. It causes a bit of, yeah, it's close. It's actually very narrow in here, like crazy narrow. The cage work too uh, is something that you guys built? No, the cage was done by a company called Stone Motorsport in, in Ireland. So they did the cage while I was at Formula D or whatever. Oh. 
is the steering wheel. It's all steering wheel control. So, so cool. it's just there's your ignition. It has uh, anti-lag, launch, everything. It's got party mode that is high boost, low boost, lights and uh, every, <laughs> power steering, wipers, radio, back to the pits. Got the new Haltech IC7 dash and electric throttle for the anti-lag. And So then what is that pedal box set up out of? It is a custom made hanging system, but it has the, the Sylvia brakes in behind the firewall actually in here. So it actually has, uh, it has GTR brakes in it, just like the Rodo car does. So we've one spares package again for both cars. It has the same handbrake, has a Willwood handbrake system on the back then with Willwood discs, uh, a custom setup that I developed on the Sky and used in the 14. And then I use it in my own cars because my handbrake feels perfect to me all the time. If I sit into someone else's car, I just, it doesn't feel right. So it's just what I'm used to. Got so, it. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of talk put into the fuel cell is in behind the, the carbon fiber there, so that's in the middle. Oh. And the rear is, we can look in the rear if you want, it's radiator, you can see the subframe mounted and stuff. Sure, let's take a look at that real quick. I have to say, you know, when I first saw the renderings for this, I was like, I can't wait to see it in person. I know, I know. And after all these years, I finally get to see it and hear it. Yeah. Ugh, this is just so It went cool. on way too long and you know, so many messages from people. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you think finishing the quattro, I'm like, ah, oh, this thing, am I ever going to finish it? <laughs> and that's, that's how it goes for passion projects. You know, does, when yeah. you're, you're, you're funding it yourself yeah. and you just want to build something just because you want it to exist mm -hmm. and for yourself to enjoy it, it's that's really, just how it goes. It's such a difficult project. Like, yeah. Okay. So that just comes off like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you okay. Fill the, fill the cells through here. You've got a jumping point for the battery, which is under there. Uh, electronic power steering here in the rear, piped forward to the rack. What is, what is that from? It's a GM pump. So, oh. Yeah. It's a General Motors pump. Okay. You'll find everyone over here using that now. It's oh. really popular. We sell lots of them. We have lots of them in the shop. So this is horrendous here because I borrowed the <laughs> header tank for the other car. Oh, so no. I just had to stitch one in for this weekend. Right. But then how are you, like the rear, a lot of it is S chassis or all of it is S chassis? It's an S chassis subframe, just pretty much the same, just slightly modified at the front to fit the chassis. And then we use different knuckles and it's got a GTR V spec diff at the moment. Oh, wow. Okay. So it will have a quick change, but I had a GTR V spec there with really strong shafts and stuff, so it goes in. It, it, it shouldn't break with the type of power it has, so that's what it has right now. But and then, then, but then, like, what about the front suspension? How are you able to get like the proper angle? The front is a Sylvia knuckle with a KW Sylvia shock. Then we're free with what we can do with the shock top, so we place that where we wanted it. And then it is an Audi front subframe and we made custom A-arms to reach the Sylvia knuckle then. So the only custom part there is the top and the LCA. The rack then comes out where the drive shafts came out of the Quattro, where the hole is in the chassis. So the steering rack, which was on the firewall of the Audis, is now underneath where you might think is common um, and comes out where the shafts came out for the front wheel drive. So cool. So I love yeah. It. Well, thank you so much for showing us this build. Uh, we want to see it run on yep. track and I want to hear it. So yep. later on, if we can warm it up and you can maybe bounce off the anti-lag or something, um, it would be cool to see. Everyone loves that bit. Yeah. Well, the anti-lag is sweet. It's so beautiful. It just sounds like the 80s. The videos you've watched on YouTube, it's just, <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. So good. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.